In this video, we are going to write a complete program from scratch to play the lottery in Java. We're going to randomly generate six winning lottery numbers and then allow the user to input their six lottery number picks and then print out which of the user's numbers match the winning lottery numbers and tell the user whether they've won or not. We're also going to go over your odds of winning this lottery. If you're new to this channel, my name is John and I make a Java tutorial video every single week either a video of a Java concept or a full tutorial where we walk through creating a complete Java program from scratch like this one. So be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the video every week. And as always, the full source for this video is available in a link down in the description, so go get it. Okay, so in order to make a program like this where you can play the lottery, first of course, we need to randomly create the winning lottery numbers. For this particular lottery, we are going to use six numbers and each of those numbers can range from one to 49. And we'll also have a rule that those numbers can't repeat. The winning lottery numbers have to all be different from each other. First, we just need a list of integers so we can hold the winning lottery numbers that we randomly create. So list integer winning numbers equals new array list. We're going to clip so we can do control shift O to uh, organize our imports. We want to import java.util.list and java.util.arraylist. To generate random numbers in Java, it's probably easiest to use the random class. Not just any class, the random class. Not some random class. The random class. We'll say random random equals new random. Again, we'll organize imports and we import java.util.random. So now we want to create six random numbers between 1 and 49, but they also have to be different. Because we want to generate six random lottery numbers, we can start with a for loop that begins with uh, int i equals zero, i less than six, because we want six lottery numbers, i plus plus. So we'll go through this loop exactly six times. So in here, we want to create a random number between one and 49, six times. First, let's just uh, create an int variable uh, called winning number so that we can uh, put our winning number into it. Now to generate a new random number, we'll use random.nextInt, and we'll pass in the number uh, 49, and then we're going to add one to it. So how this next int method works is it takes the number that you passed in and then it generates for you a random integer between zero and one less than the number that you've entered. So when we give it random.nextint49, it's going to give us a random int between zero and 48. And since what we want is a random int between one and 49, all we have to do is add one to it. And then poof, a random number between one and 49. But now that we have our new random winning number, we have to check whether this winning number is already in this winning numbers list. And if it is, we have to try again so we get a different one. And to do that is simple. We can just say if not winning numbers dot contains and then pass in the winning number that we just generated. This contains method is a really useful helper method on all of the Java collections classes. And list is the Java collection that we're using here. And you can just pass in a value and it will tell you whether that value is in the list. So here we just want to say, if this value is not in the list, then great, it's not a duplicate and we can add it to the list of winning numbers. And to add it to the list of winning numbers is also easy. We can just say winning numbers dot add winning number. But the thing is, if that winning number is already on the list of winning numbers, we don't want to add it to the list and we want to make sure to try again. So to implement that logic, we're actually going to put all of this code right here inside a while true loop. Just say while true, we'll do all of this. So right now this is going to just loop infinitely. So we have to have a way to break out of this loop when we do successfully add a new winning number. And to do that, that, all we have to do is literally write a break statement after we add our number. So let's talk about exactly how this is working. We're going to go through this for loop six times, right? And each of those six times, we're going to go through this while true loop where we generate a new number and then make sure it's not already in the list. And if it isn't, we add it. But if it is already in the list, it's going to skip this break statement and restart at the top of this while loop and try to make a new winning number again. So when we finally get completely out of this and past our for loop, we should have exactly six random numbers between 1 and 49 that are different from each other. Let's actually go ahead and give that a test so we can see uh, if we're generating the winning numbers correctly. So all we need to do is actually pass in uh, winning numbers to uh, system.out.println. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. All right, so we got 18, 5, 29, 23, 33, and 30. So that's good. That's six numbers. They're between 1 and 49, and they are all different. Let's run a few more times to make sure we get that every time. That all looks good. All right, perfect. We have generated our winning lottery numbers. Now that we have the winning lottery numbers, we need to work on the code to allow the user to add in their six lottery number picks. Let's just start with a quick uh, print statement to the user. Please enter your six numbers between one and 49. 
inclusive. To get the user input, as you may have guessed, we're going to use the scanner class. So we'll create a new scanner, scanner, scanner equals new scanner system dot in to get keyboard input from the user. Again, we'll organize imports and when java.util.scanner. Since we want to get exactly six number picks from the user, we can use this exact same uh, for loop structure here as we did above. So we can just copy and paste that. This for loop will again go through exactly six times, so that's what we need. For each iteration through the for loop, we want to uh, collect a number from the user. What you can use is the scanner class's next int method. But what I actually like to do is uh, create a string. Let's call it number string. And instead of using next int, I like to use scanner dot next line. Of course, that gets just any string from the user. It doesn't have to just be a number. But I tend to like to use next line instead of next int and next float and those other methods on scanner, just because those other methods tend to act really weird because they don't take the entire line that you input. They stop when it finds one number, and then it could act really strangely trying to interpret the rest of the line later. Whereas if you use next line, it takes the entire thing that the user input before they hit enter. And then we can just take what they input as a string and parse it into a number. And here's how we do that. We create a new int, we'll just call it number, why not, equals integer dot parse int, and then we pass in our number string. This integer dot parse int method takes a string that you pass in and converts it to an int. So now that we have the user's uh, lottery pick, we actually need to add it to a list of guesses that the user has input, which we do need to create. We haven't created that yet. Let's go ahead and create a new list of integers again. We'll call it guest numbers equals new array list. So then down here, all we have to do is take guest numbers and then add the number. So pretty easy, right? And it seems like that should work. However, there's a couple of things that we need to account for here. One is that we want the lottery numbers to be between 1 and 49. And here the user could input whatever the heck number that they want. They could input 10,000, they could input negative 6, and neither of those makes sense. So we'd actually want them to retry if they put in some number that isn't between 1 and 49. And also what else could happen is they could enter something that isn't even a number at all. If they enter in potato here as their number string and we try to parse an int from a potato, we are going to run into an exception that we have to account for or the program will blow up. So what we want to do if that happens is catch the exception and allow the user to retry and enter another number. We'll do one thing at a time. So first we're just going to validate that if it's a number, as long as there's no exceptions, that that number is indeed between 1 and 49. But if it's not, in order to allow the user to retry, we are going to have to do this again inside a while true loop. While true indent all of this stuff and end our loop after that. So all of this stuff in here is now in a while true loop. So what we can do right after we get this int number, we can just check to make sure that if that number is greater than or equal to 1 and that number is less than or equal to 49, then we know we are fine to add that number to our list of guessed numbers. Otherwise, we'll go back to the start of this while true loop and the user will have to input another number. So if that's the case and the user entered a valid number, we can break out of our while true loop and go back to the next iteration of our for loop until they go through six times and guess six numbers. But we also want to add an else so that if the number that they enter is not between 1 and 49, if it's an invalid number, then we want to print out something to let the user know. A number, the number that they entered, is not between 1 and 49. Please try again. So now what this will do is if the number that the user entered is between 1 and 49, it adds that number to the list and breaks out of this loop and gets the next number until it gets all six that we need. Otherwise, if it's not between 1 and 49, we print out a helpful message to the user and we'll restart our while true loop, which allows the user to enter that number again. They can try again. So since we've written a bit of code there, let's go ahead and run it and test that our logic is working. So it does say, please enter your six numbers between one and 49 inclusive. So let's go ahead and enter like the number one. Okay, one is valid, so that works. Let's try um, 50. 50 is not between one and 49. Okay, so it does say 50 is not between one and 49. Please try again. And then let's also try zero and we get the same message, perfect. Now just to test our edge cases, let's try 49 and that should be allowed and it is. So it looks like that logic is working. One thing I would like to do is each time we successfully collect a number from the user is perhaps like return the current list of numbers that they have input. And we can do that right here at the beginning of our for loop. We can do another system out statement. Your current numbers are, and then we can just print out guest numbers and then prompt them to enter another number. Please enter a number. And then just a reminder that it has to be between one and 49. 
Okay, let's run a quick test and make sure that works. So we're still printing out our winning lottery numbers here for debugging purposes, but it allows us to cheat. So before we're done, we're going to have to take that out. Anyway, so our current numbers are empty. We don't have any current numbers. So we can add, uh, let's say, 15 to our list. Okay, and it does say your current numbers are 15. We can add another number. Let's say we make a mistake and we say 50. Well, that's out of the range between 1 and 49, and it does say that. And then we should get the same thing if we try to enter 0, and we do. And then let's go ahead and try the number 1. All right, that works, and it shows that our current numbers are 15 and 1. And then last but not least, let's try 49, and that works as well. Now, however, what doesn't work is we can still go in and enter a potato, and our program explodes with a number format exception. And it happens right here on this line when it tries to parse an int from a potato. And that's because this parse int method needs some kind of string input that actually makes sense as a number to create an int. And if you give it potato or some other garbage, uh, it doesn't know what the heck to do and ends up throwing a number format exception. So what we have to do here is catch that exception and allow the user to try again. To do that, right inside this while true loop, we can create our uh, try block. And we'll put everything that's currently in here inside the try. And then after that try, we'll create our catch block where we'll catch a number format exception. Call it NFE. In this catch block, there's not a whole lot that we actually have to do except for just print out a message to the user that, hey, you gave me garbage and you have to try again. So we can just say sys out, dude, that's not even a number. Please try again. So let's give that a quick test as well. Let's enter some garbage like potato. Dude, that's not even a number, please try again. And then make sure it recovers from that nicely and we can enter five and it adds it to the list. So our exception handling is working exceptionally. And if you'd like a full video going through exception handling in Java with try catch finally catching multiple types of exceptions, check out this video here I did on exception handling. Anyway, now we have this big giant for loop and after that for loop completes, we should have all six lottery number picks from the user. And we have already gotten the six winning lottery numbers that we generated above. Now all we have to do is compare those lists of numbers and see if the user won. So first let's just print out uh, what the winning lottery numbers were. The winning numbers were, and then we just put in winning numbers. And then we'll print out uh, the numbers that the user input. So that'd just be your numbers are guest numbers. Now what we'd like to do is to get a list of all the numbers that the user guessed that were winning numbers. So really what we want to get is all the elements of the guest numbers list that are also present in the winning numbers list. And you might think we're about to have to do something really complicated with like a loop to get that to work, but the list class actually offers a really cool helper method for us to be able to do that. So what we can do is say guest numbers dot retain all and then pass in the winning numbers. So what this will do is take our guest numbers list and remove all the elements of this list that are not in the winning numbers list. And so what you'll be left with is everything in the guest numbers list that was a winning number. So that'll leave essentially the matched numbers, the numbers that the user guessed that were winning numbers. So we can print that out too. Your matched numbers are, and it's still in this guest numbers variable. And then we can finally do the big check. Did the user guess all of the winning lottery numbers? And we could do something really complicated for that too, but uh, let's just keep it simple. And we can do that really easily here with another method that is offered by Java lists. So we can just say if our guest numbers list contains all of the elements of the winning numbers list. So we're going to be using this contains all method. And this will return true if this guest numbers list contains all of the elements that are in the winning numbers list. And that'll only be true here if the user guessed all of the numbers exactly correctly. And if they did, that is amazing. So we can print out, holy crap, you actually won. How did you do that? And then otherwise, if the user didn't guess all the numbers correctly, which they probably didn't, we can just print out, sorry, you lost. Not surprising. All right, let's go ahead and run this and give it a test. Okay, so let's enter some numbers. Let's say we got 5, 13, uh, 45, 49, 16, and 3. And so we printed out the winning numbers, printed out my numbers, and then it printed out the match numbers, which this is the result of that retain all. It took the list that I guessed and took out every element that wasn't a winning number. So all that was left was 5. So 5 was the only number that I guessed correctly. And then of course it printed out, sorry, you lost. So now let's run it again and make sure that if we win, it actually tells us that. So for now we're cheating and we have all the winning lottery numbers, so let's just start typing them in. 28, 15, 19, 48, 42, and 18. And 
Holy crap, we actually won. How did you do that? We cheated. And since the numbers that we guessed exactly matched the winning lottery numbers, the result of that retain all call didn't remove anything. All the numbers existed in the list because we guessed the right lottery numbers exactly. Now we're not done quite yet. As always, for all the programs that we use the scanner for, we need to remember to close our scanner. That's what this yellow squiggly line is here in Eclipse. It's telling us, hey, you might have a resource leak here because you aren't closing your scanner. So to fix that, we will just call scanner.close. Closing your scanner just makes you feel all warm and cozy, right? So in order to make this uh, not stupid, we are going to have to take out where we print the winning numbers before the player puts in their guesses. So to do that, we can just comment it out. That way we can just come back in later and uncomment it if we have to do some kind of enhancement or something. We have an easy way to debug. So now let's run it and make sure it still works. 5, 13, uh, 49, 18, 8, and 6. And this time I matched zero of the winning lottery numbers. But everything is still working. So you might be wondering, what exactly are the odds of guessing all six of these numbers exactly right? What are the odds of winning the lottery here? So it turns out the odds are 1 in 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44. And that turns out to be 10,068,347,520. So now technically this would give you the odds of getting all the numbers exactly right and in the right order. But we don't need our number picks to be in the right order. We can match the numbers however we want. The order doesn't matter. But the number of ways that these six numbers can be ordered is actually six factorial, which of course is just six times five times four times three times two times one, which turns out to be 720. So to get our true odds here with the order not mattering, we can take our number here and divide it by 720. So 10,068,347,520 divided by 720 turns out to be this, 13,983,816. So your odds of getting all of these numbers exactly right in this program are 1 in 13,983,816. So not great. I looked up the odds of some other stuff in comparison, and it turns out your odds of getting hit by falling airplane parts are about 1 in 10 million. So your odds of getting all of these lottery numbers exactly right are about 30% worse than your odds of getting hit by falling airplane parts. And even these odds are way better than the odds of like the real lottery in the US. Those odds are something like 1 in 300 million, where you probably have better odds of getting struck by lightning a hundred times in a row when you're a thousand miles under the ground wearing a rubber suit. If one of you ends up writing this program and guessing all of the numbers exactly correctly, I would love to know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by giving the video a like and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more Java videos and tutorials like this in the future. And a sincere thanks for taking the time to like and subscribe. It's the only way these videos get out to help more people. See you next time.